Yesterday, Google unleashed the most intense barrage of AI hype bait, trust me bro benchmarks, and paywalled vaporware the world has ever seen. And it was awesome. A Gemini 2.5 DeepThink crushed all other reasoning models like O3, and even the cheap Gemini Flash model was able to beat off O3 from the top spot. In the Chrome browser, Gemini will soon have the ability to navigate and use websites for you. Meanwhile, this new tool called Stitch will automatically generate and design UIs, which means you're really screwed if you're a web designer. AI is going to be designing websites for AI agents to use in the AI-powered browser. Meanwhile, Jules is an async agentic coding agent that will code your AI agents, making coders obsolete yet again. I'm afraid of no man, but this new AI tool called Flow scares me. This thing could actually make low-effort faceless edgelords on YouTube obsolete by generating entire cinematic adventures with AI. But that's just the tip of the slopberg. In today's video, we'll break down 11 game-changing things you need to know from Google I.O. 2025. It is May 21st, 2025, and you're watching The Code Report. When I went to watch the keynote, I saw that they had turned off comments, and it's obvious this cowardly move is because they already knew what the top comment would be. And that's why we're going to talk about the worst thing first, Google's new AI Ultra payment plan. I'm already on my second, second mortgage to afford all my AI subscriptions, but now to get access to the full girth of Gemini's power, you need the new Google AI Ultra subscription, which is available at the low, low price of $124.99 per month for three months, then $249 a month after that. And if you buy right now, they'll also throw in one month free and and an absurd 30 terabytes of storage for all your generated slob. But that might be worth it, because Gemini is now the best across all LM Arena categories. Not surprisingly, it completely crushed its own Trust Me Bro benchmarks, and the vibes are strong with this one. Gemini also managed to beat Pokemon on its own, but what might be more exciting is the release of Gemma 3N. Gemma models are open, so as a developer you can use them to make money for your own products, and the performance of this one is approaching Claude Sonnet 3.7. Now, as I mentioned before, Gemini is also going to be coming in your browser soon, and its new agent mode, formerly Project Mariner, will allow it to take actual actions on websites like click buttons, fill out forms, and automatically generate your opinion to post a comment to a Fireship video. At the end of 2024, I told you that 2025 was the year of agents. OpenAI just launched the Codex agent, GitHub Copilot launched agent mode, and now Gemini has its own creatively named agent mode. And agents will be used in tools like Stitch and Jules to automatically generate UIs, code them, and interface with tools like Figma. The best news, though, is that Google supports the model context protocol, which makes it much easier for developers to integrate this tech. That's surprising because Google would normally go off and invent its own architecture that nobody asked for and then kill it a few years later. But one of the most impressive things at I.O. is Project Astra. It takes a live video feed and uses low latency AI to describe the world around you. I've been using it to identify which mushrooms are edible in the wild, and it's actually pretty useful. We also found out that Android XR glasses are real, and eventually this technology will be integrated into them to compete with things like the Meta Smart Ray-Bans. But an even more futuristic announcement was Project Beam, a tool that takes 2D video and uses AI to transform it into a 3D experience. That'll make your daily stand-up meetings much more realistic, and I think it could be a game-changer for one other industry that I can't mention in this video without being demonetized. In addition, VO and Imagen, Google's video and image generators, also got huge upgrades. And what's crazy is that you can now generate video that also has sound. And she commands your awe with every breaking light. And this is all being put together in a new tool called Flow, which is targeted at Hollywood Studios, and someday might be used to generate all the content that you binge on Netflix. And that brings us to the final thing you need to know, which is absolutely insane and crazy, and I can't even believe I'm saying this, but CSS has new primitives for building carousels. Instead of 10,000 lines of jQuery, you can now build something like this with just a few hundred lines of CSS. And once you've done that, you'll need a server to deploy it to, like Hostinger, the sponsor of today's video. Not only do they provide fully managed hosting solutions, but also virtual private servers where you can deploy anything. For under 10 bucks per month, you could be running your own server with predictable pricing and a respectable two CPUs and eight gigabytes of RAM. In fact, when you create a server, you can automatically configure it with tools like Coolify, which makes it possible to host Next.js on your own VPS with minimal pain. If you're looking for freedom and an awesome developer experience, check out Hostinger with the link below. This has been The Code Report. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.